Let's talk about what makes Dimash's performance of The Crown awesome. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark, and I'm gonna help you sing and perform more like the top artists around the world. I'm a professional voice teacher, performance coach, and opera stage director. I've helped thousands of singers around the world learn the techniques and methods that got the top singers to where they are. Okay, so a few things off the bat here. What are we seeing? What are we hearing? What are we seeing? Well, we're seeing blue purple lights setting as kind of this nighttime, softer light, more romantic. Um, it's nighttime, right? Is the feeling we got. It could be noon outside, but we're thinking night right now. The second thing that I'm noticing is there are these really strong circle shapes in the middle of the stage, right? There's interesting patterns going on and lights going on around and different other shapes going on, but circles are really strong visual elements. What makes that so interesting here is that he's not standing in the dead center. He's standing off the side to this strong circle element. He's not standing in the bullseye. What does that do? Well, it actually makes it more dynamic. If he was dead center, it would be more stagnant. We'd feel like it's at rest. The world is how it is. He's the center of this bullseye and visually, we would feel no tension, no need for him to move. Because he's outside of that circle and he's kind of off to the side, it creates a tension. Something's out of balance. Something's offline. Something's not perfectly symmetrical, right? And that's awesome because it sets up this tension that's dramatic here at the very start catches our interest on a subconscious level. This kind of off balance feeling, it makes us lean forward and wanna see where it's gonna go. We wanna see where he go goes next. On a subconscious level, we wanna see him come to the very center and live there. I don't know what's gonna happen, I haven't watched it yet, so maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. But that tension is really great. One of the things that a lot of performers like to do at least when they're younger, is they like to make everything symmetrical. But in terms of body language and visual elements staying interesting, this asymmetrical quality, balanced but asymmetrical, is really helpful and creates a lot of drama and visual excitement and gets us engaged. And I love what's going on there. What are we hearing? Well, we're hearing just staying really relaxed, calm, kind of breathy, aspirate, which means he's using a larger volume to velocity ratio. So the volume is larger than if he was singing completely clean. And that's that balance is always what we're looking for, trying to keep that velocity and volume in the optimal balance if we're wanting a clean sound. Does he want a clean sound here? No, I don't think he does. I think he's making exactly the sound he's choosing to sound because it's softer. It also creates this kind of romantic ambiance, right? Love it. Something I want to point out there, those low snows, yeah. He brought it super forward and bright. Tendency for most is we go lows, we want to pull it back. No, right? Make it overly dark. Why? It's already low. The key is to make it audible, clear, and make it sound consistent with the rest. So for most people, that's gonna mean that you're really making sure it stays resonant and forward. It's gonna feel a little snarly to it, right? So make sure that you're keeping that sound present on the bottom, not falling into that, letting it woofy and fall back kind of place. Especially when we're talking about this genre of music. <laughs> What are we saying? Well, one of the things I want you to notice is what he's wearing. 
It's really cool. It's kind of this really cool jacket on top of really casual clothes, which is always a look that I love, but you'll notice it's going black and white. High contrast really engages our eyes, right? If we want to show pictures to babies, brand new infants, black and white contrast pictures are going to get their attention the most and captivate them. That doesn't necessarily change over time, right? We are still captivated by high contrast, so that's really cool. What I love even more though, if you look at the background, it's matching his costume colors as well. It adds some other colors in as well, which is nice because it gives us a little variety. But remember, the more we can tie all the visual elements together by keeping some elements the same and then adding on that so each element then adds its own bit of information as well, we get variety and meaning in each element of the performance, but also a sense of continuity. And I think they do an awesome job here. Nod down and back, upper two smile, 80% of yawning smile, consistent airflow. Other thing I love about Dimash, and I know I've talked about this before, but I love how big he's able to play, right? He's a pretty lean guy, but he owns that stage. He just owns it. Huge monster stances, huge big arm gestures. And you might think, well, it's overdone. My question to that would be, how many of us would actually gesture and do stuff that big if we hadn't learned over life to try to restrain it and pull it back and be tight? If you watch it, little kids, they gesture really big. They sometimes take really wide stances. So my question would be, is the real genuine and authentic expression a big expression? As long as the, as the emotion and the music and the text call for it, is it really overdone? Or is that really our natural state? I don't know. I think it'd be a fascinating question. What I found is with performers, if we can decide to give ourselves permission to play it as big and unrestrained as possible, that our emotions come along for the ride, that we feel bigger emotions too, and the audience eats it up and is able to enjoy it with us. Give it a try. Try to let yourself play it big, ridiculous, do it wrong, do it silly, but try playing as big as you can and see what the response is. Not if you feel silly, you'll probably feel silly and like you're totally overdoing it. But my guess is your audience will thank you. Okay, other thing I want to point out here is you'll notice he's not big all the time though. It's just when the music and emotion calls for it. The way to think about it is he's contouring his gestures to the contour of the song. Bigger musical moments require bigger gestures. And I'm not just talking about hand here. I'm talking about anything you do with your body. Smaller ones require smaller gestures. The biggest part of your gesture should be the biggest part of the phrase. It doesn't mean we have to do this slow chariots of fire consistent move thing, nah. We don't want it in perfect time, but we do want to match up those moments so that the biggest part of the gesture lands with the biggest part of the phrase and that big phrases, big gestures, small phrases, small gestures in terms of energy level, intensity, emotional quality. He does an awesome job with that. I think part of it is he's internalized the music so much that he's just able to let his body do what it's gonna do and own it that way. And I think that's great. You're gonna all kill me. I just stopped it before the high note. Uh, 
Okay, I'll play it here in a second and I'll rewind it, okay? So you can hear it all the way through. So first of all is you'll notice, I want you to notice where he's lining up. He just hit middle of the floor right here. And where is he in the song? At the climax, if not the climax, one of them, right? The way to think about it is you wanna be in the most stable, strongest part of the stage when you are in the strongest emotional moment. Then that center point means something. So the way to think about it is like this. The way to think about it is that the center of a stage, whether it's the horizontal center or vertical center, or in this case, it's circles, so it's the, the dead center, is like it's a magnet that's repelling you. So it takes more emotional energy the closer you are to that center to be able to stay there, right? If the emotion gets strong, the closer you can get, it gives you the strength to get there. And the, if it starts to ebb again, it pushes you away. So that to be able to stay there for any length of time takes a lot of emotional intensity. That's helpful because then those positions on stage really start to mean something. They aren't just arbitrary, they aren't just arbitrary places that we go and stand because that's where people stand when they sing. They end up having emotional weight to them. And I think that's really awesome how he's using that here. Is really, really smart. Awesome. So one of the questions I get a lot in lessons and in comments and other places like that is that people feel like they're no good at runs, like they're hard, like they don't feel like they can do it. My answer to you is yes, you can. If you can go, woo, if you can do that easy slide on the pitches that you're wanting to sing, then you can do a run. The key then is to keep that feeling of slide and slow it down so you slide up to each note and then linger. So do it once, woo, and then linger. Woo, 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 And then you start slowing it down and adding more pitches in there. But as long as you keep that feeling of slide in it, it'll keep it nice and lean and loose and free to be able to move really fast through those. One of the reasons it doesn't work is because if our brain's thinking all these individual moments of notes, it has a tendency we want to stop the airflow to bog down and get tight around each of these notes to make sure that each happen, right? If you let yourself just flow through them and just linger on them and touch them, then it won't have a chance to bind up and get tight and tense and it'll just keep that air flowing and keep it nice and easy. And that's what we're hearing here. I love how fluid and consistent and easy his singing is. You'll notice here, there's some moments when we have some side shots that he doesn't have the great posture in the song. His posture is not the greatest, right? His head's forward. It's kind of this lazy posture. I would say that for a beginning singer, that's not necessarily the place you wanna be because it makes it harder to get everything working right. But for a professional like Dimash is, you have to be able to sing in any different position or posture possible. The more postures you can sing and still keep the instrument lined up and doing what it needs to do, the more expressive options you have to, right? Because that relaxed kind of loose posture really communicates something. He's wearing clothes that are a little more casual. And so that more casual posture matches, right? It kind of works, works with what's going on there. And if he's super tall and stiff and perfectly lined up and balanced, it wouldn't really read right. It wouldn't really read genuine and authentic. So the goal here is to figure out how to really get things working efficiently, lined up well, and then how to then alter that posture in your body and how to make it work in ways so that you can sing from any position you want to. Let me help you find your voice. Book a lesson with me at foundyourvoice.com. I can help you sing easier per and perform at a consistently higher level that's more engaging to your audience. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. Comment down below with what you loved about Dimash's performance, what else you want to see me react to, and what you think is awesome. See you next time.